welcome to Kitchen Counter Crafts. If you like this video, would you please like, comment, share, and subscribe. For today's video, I'm going to actually do a continuation of what I did yesterday, and that is, I promised you I would do a um, big Victorian uh, purse puzzle with a 12 by 12 sheet of paper because I ended up showing you just on a smaller sheet of paper. And uh, in case you missed that video, let me just kinda get it for you real quickly. You can use, this is just a coffee dyed sheet of music um, that my my daughter's in a praise and worship group and then they get music and she brings me the sheet so I can coffee dye them and do uh, great things with them. And so what you want to do is make sure that you get a, a square sheet of paper. And so to square it up, you fold it into a triangle and this is again just an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and all you have to do and i'm doing this very rough without even a pair of scissors um, you're just gonna do that and it becomes a square piece of paper and i did the same with this lovely cream colored sheet of paper as well so that's all you have to do but if you are using a 12 by 12 you don't even have to square it up or do anything so what you're going to do is just take this sheet and uh, fold it to the corner i should show you what a victorian purse puzzle looks like shouldn't i especially if you missed that first video so let me do that for you as well all right <clears throat> so this year for valentine's i'm making these victorian purse puzzles and what i have is a little fabric bag that I just kind of stitched along this side. And this is what my Valentines look like. And you just open them up and they have verses that have to do with love. And then I painted by hand each one of these. And when you take the edges, you unfold it and it has a message in there from me with a little bit more painting of flowers inside and you can even put little messages here of love and personalize it even more that way which i'm just trying to kind of knock these out and uh, get them done that way so the cool thing about that is that when you do the folding these four images here end up being kind of like this pinwheel and then you can fold it all up like that so i'm going to show you this here um, in, in this. Okay, so now that I've told you what a Victorian purse puzzle looks like, we're gonna go ahead and, oh, it's got like fabric stuff all over it. So the first thing you're doing is folding it into a triangle, and then you're gonna take this and fold it again in a triangle. And Try to get this as best as you can. And there you go. So, and I just try to crease it really well. So you're gonna have this kind of X on there. It's hard to tell on the print side, so I'm just doing it this way. Next thing you're going to do is to fold this so that the paper kind of looks like a tic-tac-toe with nine squares. So the way we're going to do that is you can actually measure this out with four inches, four inches, four inches, score it, and then fold it, but you are going to get this the Mona way, which is very lazy. And so I'm just gonna do this here, and um, you just kind of fold it like, a, like you would in um, a letter in an envelope, and try to get the edges as best as you can. And uh, you can use a bone folder to get the edges down and this really is kind of important that you get the edges down or another trick I learned is just take your pair of scissors and you can use the handle to get the edges down so you have this and now I'm going to just turn it one it doesn't matter which way you turn it but you're you're going to fold it again into thirds so that you get nine squares of paper. And again, you wanna make sure your edges are creased really well on this and you'll see why in just one moment. All right, so here's my 
my paper and uh, the way it looks. And I think that's gonna be the inside. I don't really know how the inside outside works on this quite yet, because I've been using plain paper. So I think this is gonna be the inside. And what I wanna do is actually make, okay, just don't listen to me right now. Um, so basically whatever the inside, whatever the inside is, um, is going to be your, um, I probably just confused it all up. Okay, so whatever way your square looks, that's the inside of the paper. So you don't have to quite worry about that. I'm just recreasing these so that I can show you because in the print, it's very, very hard to see. All right, this is what I was trying to do. So you've got the X in the center and it doesn't matter which way that is, but then you've got this square that is the inside of your paper, okay? And what's gonna happen is when you fold it up, it's gonna fold around that, um, kind of like this. So that square is the inside right here of your paper, okay? So once you have folded this way and this way and you get this little square, you are now going to flip the paper over, okay? That's very important because I didn't get that in the beginning and I just about was gonna freak out. So now you are looking at the square that is in the center and you're going to bring this edge into the bottom left-hand corner and you're gonna see why. It's at the corner of your square that's in the center. All right, um, the reason why is because that's the fold that you want. So you've got that first fold you're gonna turn it, it doesn't matter which way again, but you're going to take it to that same part of the square. So it's gonna be the bottom left-hand side of the square. You're gonna crease that well. Again, turn it and to the bottom left-hand side of the square. And one more time to the bottom. Now I lost my square in the middle, there it is. Now to the bottom left-hand side of the square. Okie dokie. So you did that because you had flipped it over and now you re-flip it because this is the inside of your square. All right. So now one, two, three, and four. These are gonna be your um, spots that fold up nice and neat like this, okay? So, um, hmm. I'm going to just draw some hearts there. I don't have my pens with me. All right, that's okay. Um, it's okay to have blue, right? So we're, we're gonna just draw some hearts on there if my pen will write. No, it's not going to write because it's dried out. All right, hang on a minute. Let's try this. I know. Sorry about that. All right, so, you know, it's like I always say, like it's not a video unless somebody runs off to go get some sort of supply. All right, so there's my hearts and you're gonna see what happens in just a minute. Just drawing some hearts, nothing amazing. All right, so in these hearts that I just drew, um, this is what's gonna make that um, foldy part. So what I do is I actually kind of get my square ready and then you're going to take the corners and you are going to, oops, the corners need to be, they were folded wrong, right? Okay, they need to be folded so that they give you, because uh, the corners actually fold in really well. There we go, okay. So what you're going to do is take the corners and get that square shape. So you're almost like making a basket. And then all of a sudden you'll, you're, you'll start seeing your uh, pinwheel start to fold. And it's pretty exciting, but you kind of have to help it along because it's just kind of like that. So what you're getting is these corners to lie down like that. So there's one, there's the other. And uh, there's been several videos out there that say this is like magically it happens. It never happens for me magically. This is like 
the 12th one that I'm making. So you're, I, I don't know, maybe it'll magically happen for you. I hope it does, but if you're like me, you're gonna have to help this guy along because it just doesn't wanna behave for me for whatever reason. Maybe it's just me. All right, but if you end up in that problem, then you're gonna know. Just put some hearts down and then you'll figure out which one it is. And that's it. Okay, now to fold this up into that lovely shape, you are gonna turn this so that it's not an X, but it's like a plus sign with a top and bottom. It doesn't matter which top, which bottom. You fold the first one in. And if it's not straight, you can help to straighten it along. Then you fold the next one in. Oh, something is done. Then the next one, and then the next one. And voila, all done. There's the Victorian purse puzzle and write on it and fill it up with some lovely love messages for your friends or your loved one and tuck that last corner in to make that pocket. And um, if you'd like, you can watch my other video on this one or make this one and have a lovely day of crafting. And I hope you have a happy Valentine's Day. Until the next video, bye-bye.